This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform where you can create your own website. <laughs> Look what I have, a rusty old mice. More specifically, a 50-year-old Wilton mice that is in pretty rough condition. So in this video, I'm gonna do my best to restore this thing into its former glory. And man, there's a lot of stuff to do here. Because apart from being really rusty and missing one of the jaws, all four of the screws that are meant to hold the jaws in place are either broken off inside the casting or just stuck. So we're gonna have to do some machining and welding to sort that out. There's also a broken piece in the bottom casting here that we're gonna have to try and weld. There's a piece in the back that is entirely missing, so we'll have to machine a new one. But before we do any of that, let's take this whole thing apart and see what we have to work with. Let's get started. Hey, that wasn't too, too bad. All the parts are in their individual pieces with the exception of this jaw. This guy is definitely gonna need an angle grinder before it wants to come apart. But before we go to town on this guy with the angle grinder and start sanding all the castings, I'm gonna give everything a good cleaning because right now they're just covering old grease and grime. All right guys, we did it. After a ton of work, we finally got all the grease, grime, old paint, rust, and dirt off of these things, and we can finally see what we gotta work with now. Now, all things considered, it's not that bad, but there's definitely some work here. I also managed to get that last jaw off of there. Didn't even have to use an end grinder, I just hit it with a hammer, and that extremely stripped screw just came right out. That also means that I have now one casting with two holes that are completely stripped, and another casting that have both bolts completely stuck inside the holes. Luckily, I've already bought new jaws. These aren't actually meant for this vise, which in this case is a good thing because they have a different hole pattern. That means that hopefully I can just drill and tap new holes in between here and then bolt those right into the jaw. But before we do that, we have a little bit more work to do. You can clearly see that the jaws here don't exactly sit flush here and there's also a bunch of damaged areas here with holes and dents. I want to machine all that so that it's nice and flat so that the jaws have a nice and square area to sit against. But before we do that, I want to repair the main broken areas. That is for one, the damages in the castings here as well as in the back of this casting. When I went to hammer on that little pin, there was a little piece that came off, so we need to fix that. And the main thing that we need to fix is on this piece. This is the part that locks the rotation of the base. This guy has a solid crack straight down the middle here. Now I'm gonna try and fix all those things with my new TIG welder. All right, so I've got all of my stuff set up and I'm gonna attempt to weld this piece of cast iron. Now I've never done this before and from what I've been told, welding cast iron isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do. So I've done everything I can to make sure that this ends up with a hopefully good result. First off, I've filed the entire area to make sure that everything is nice and clean and also to give me some place to put that weld bead. And I'm gonna attempt welding it with some 3 16 stainless steel filler rod. Last thing I'm gonna do to prepare this is to heat up the entire part. I guess this is so the metal doesn't build up any internal stresses and ends up cracking. I don't really know, but I hope it's gonna work. Hey, I think it works. All right, so after a lot of welding, some grinding and then some more welding, I feel like I'm finally at the point where I patched up all the stuff that I need to patch up, 
before I can go to the mill and clean everything up. I've done a whole bunch of welding to this casting to sort of fill out the areas where there was missing metal. I've also patched up this little broken piece in the back here and I've welded together this guy again. And I have to say, I'm kind of surprised how well this went. I feel like everything flowed together really nicely and I got enough material in there. So I'm pretty confident that this will hold, but time will tell. All right, let's head over to the milling machine. All right, so I've got that jaw in here. I've used an indicator to make sure that the jaw is both horizontal relative to the table, as well as square in device. And then we can clean up all these surfaces. <laughs> So I've got a small issue and that is that the welds ended up being a little bit harder than I was hoping for, which means that I'm now having a bit of a hard time cutting it in the mill. So I'll take this back out of here, clean up as much as I can with the angle grinder. And then if there's any machining left to do, I'll do that after. That means that I should have done this the other way around, starting with the milling and then doing the welding. But hey, you'll live and learn. So after a lot of back and forth and trying out a whole bunch of different cutters, I did finally manage to find one that does manage to cut through the welds if I go really slowly. So now I've got the main body of the vise chucked in here. Everything is nice and square. I made sure of that with the indicator. I've ground off most of the stuff with the angle grinder, which means that we can now go really slowly and square up the rest of these surfaces. And after a bit of angle grinding and sanding, these things are starting to looking really good. And I am really happy with how perfectly these jaws fit now. Looking back at how beat up these pieces were and how this old jaw was just barely hanging on to now having these jaws just perfectly fit together, I'm really happy with that. So the next step naturally is to attach these. And I think I'll also have to modify a couple of screws to make everything fit together. All right, so just setting the last screw here. That's one jaw. You've got the other jaw right here. And right now, we finally have a vise that has two very nicely mounted square jaws. This is really starting to look like a vise. All right, so in terms of functionality, the most important part is done. When it comes to how this thing looks, there's a little bit more work left to do. So right now, the surface finish on these castings are a combination of the areas that are machined flat, some areas that are sanded smooth. Most of it has this cast texture. And there's also a bunch of areas with these really rough parts where the castings didn't quite line up. And apparently the factory didn't find it necessary to make them look nice. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna make sure that everything is nice, smooth and even. We've also got these couple of areas in the back here where I had to do the little repair. And same thing goes with this back piece where I had to weld on a little bit where it was broken off. I'm gonna make sure that these two fit together properly and that I finish everything while they're assembled together so that the curves line up properly. But before we do any of that, a quick ad from today's sponsor, Squarespace. So for as long as I've been making stuff here on YouTube, I've had a website where I can share my designs and projects with you guys. And I built that website using Squarespace. Squarespace enabled me to super easily create my own website so that I'm now able to share what I create with you guys. It's super easy to set up. You don't need to have any technical knowledge. Just choose from any of the award-winning templates and get started creating your own website right away. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. I sell everything from built plans to 3D files, but whatever you want to sell, Squarespace has the merchandising features to make your products look their best online. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash A-L-C-H for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm dirty, but hear me out. I've been grinding away on this thing for a couple of hours now, 
and I'm really pleased with the way this is turning out. So now that I've been sanding it a whole lot, I'm getting this really smooth surface finish, which I really, really like. Now initially, I was planning on painting this thing, which at this point would be the next step. I'd apply some Bondo, some body filler, sand everything smooth, and then apply some paint. Just like I did with my machinist device. But I just love the way this is looking right now, so I'm gonna try and finish the whole thing the way the back part is here now, so we're gonna have sort of a satin finished vice. Now, don't get me wrong, that's a whole lot more work than it would be to paint it, because go figure, sanding cast iron is a lot harder than Bondo, but I think it's gonna be worth it in the end. The only thing I'm having an issue with right now is these letters that have been cast into the casting. On this side, I've spent over an hour trying to get this stuff to look nice, and for as much as I tried, it's just not gonna end up well. And my solution for that is to do something that some of you are probably not gonna like. I'm just gonna get rid of the letters entirely. Because let's be honest, the function of the device is gonna remain the same, and I don't really care if it says Wilton on it or not. It's not like I'm ever gonna try and sell it. So. Oh boy, <sighs> that sure was quite the rabbit hole to go down into. Because as soon as you start sanding one area perfectly smooth, you're sort of committed to make the entire thing look like that because it would look weird if one area is nice and the other one will still be rough. Would it have been easier to paint it? 100%. I think I spent the last seven or eight hours sanding this thing. But look at this thing, look at how shiny it is. At least for a little while, I don't think I'll be sanding any cast iron anytime soon. With the exception, of course, of <laughs> this part that I still need to do. So I'll just quickly do this thing and then we can start assembling all the parts again. Oh, and I also need to do the base. So I was just about ready to start sanding and filing away on this base here. And then I had another look at it and realized that this thing is pretty round. So there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do a lot of the work here in the lathe. I won't be able to finish it completely, so there's still gonna be some manual labor, but at least it's not sanding and using the lathe is pretty fun. A little bit of hand finishing and we're good. So done sanding. And you know what? There's a fine layer of cast iron dust in my entire workshop now. All right, I'm not as dirty anymore, but I'm ready to start assembling these parts. We'll start with our base and the repaired locking mechanism. The teeth on this are gonna interface with the teeth on the bottom of that. This will go in like this, and then these bolts will go in through these two holes. And then the main body is going on top of these bolts. So nicely polished locking nuts that will go onto these bolts which locks the rotation in place, and it's starting to look like a vice, or at least half of one. I've already installed the jaw, same goes for the other side here, and it's finally time to assemble these two parts. Next up, we obviously need the part that makes this thing go in and out. Now, I've already done a fair bit of work to this part. You might remember, this thing used to have a handle sticking out of it, but that handle was in such rough shape, it was bent, it'd been hammered on a whole bunch of times. So, I just decided to cut it right off, which made it super easy to just quickly chuck this whole thing up in the lathe, turn off just a little bit of the outermost material, sand it and scotch bread it, and we're now left with this beautiful and perfect looking part, which will go right in here. And as you might remember, this screw is held in place with a steel plate that slips onto this groove here and is screwed onto the jaw. Here's the thing though, this plate used to be held in place with these screws. And these dirty old things have definitely seen some better days. And I was trying to look for some screws to replace these with, but I'm assuming that these are Imperial. However, when measuring an M5 bolt, the pitch is exactly the same, and the diameter only varies by 0.2 millimeters. So my thinking was, if the pitch is the same, I should be able to take a tap and run it inside the 
holds here and it will just cut a super slight amount, which means that I now hopefully should be able to use a regular M5 fastener and thread those right into that hole. I have no idea what this original screw is, but if one of you knows, please let me know down in the comments below. And since we're going for this super smooth and clean looking style, I've of course also polished and scotch brighted this part. I've also countersunk the holes so that we now can have countersunk Allen head screws. And then into the back here, we've got this part, which is basically just the nut for the lead screw. This goes back in here, and these two little pins are hammered back in place. Some oil on the threads, some oil on the inside surface, and this thing is starting to look like a vice again. <laughs> Doesn't this just look so cool? And it works. Now, obviously, it's not super user-friendly to have to turn this by hand like this. So we obviously need a handle. But other than that, there's just one last thing that we need to make, and that is the cap for the back here. These things usually came with a sheet metal cap that sort of closed off the back here. Mine never came with that, so we'll have to make one. Same as with the handle, we're gonna do that over at the lathe. <laughs> Look at this! We got a really nice and functional handle. I just turned this shaft to the right diameter, threaded some holes in the ends, and then I made these two nubbins with countersunk holes. So now we have these really cool end pieces for the handle. And to finish everything off, I made this thing. <laughs> just look at how shiny it is. I figured since I spent so much time machining and turning this thing out of aluminum, I might as well polish it. This thing is just held in place with some super glue so that if I ever need to take it back off, I can just heat it up and it will come right off. And with that, this project is done. I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. When I started this project, I definitely wasn't planning on spending multiple days sanding cast iron. And I have to be honest with you, I probably won't do that again anytime soon. This was a super fun project. Everything from the welding to the machining to making new parts and putting it all together and having it actually work at the end. So I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. As for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Also, I'm gonna have to figure out some way to attach this to the table here. I had already marked locations at the table here where I want to drill and tap holes. Only problem is, this table is really, really hard. I have no chance of drilling into it. I don't know.